While Embiid and Harden are two of the best regular season players of this era, their incessant foul drawing, which to be fair should be respected to a certain degree in terms of how they sell the contact elusively, is a playing style that provably doesn't translate to the playoffs. That said, Joel Embiid second only behind the Joker in points from the post per night. James Harden ranks second in points via isolations, with Embiid being right behind him in that category as the third best ISO guy. Harden leads all players by a wide margin in assist points created. Amidst the rumors that James is going to be making a Cleveland-type LeBron-esque return to Houston this summer, the facilitating of James has been consistently dominant. However, it's still tough to trust this team, which may sound negative from a Raptor fan's perspective, but even the most diehard Sixer fans have trouble with that. Whether or not Doc Rivers has been good enough regarding his play sets or relationship building with his players has been a question. We'll get to the Tyrese Maxey situation in a minute, but in terms of the play sets, considering Doc outcoached Nick Nurse in last year's first round, I can't say the game planning aspect of Doc's coaching is bad. In last year's Eastern Conference quarterfinals against Toronto, this drawn-up SLOB Doc runs for Joel to set a decoy flare for George Niang and Tyrese, and Tobias to set a down screen for Joel, allows him be to position himself for the game-winning spot-up jumper to give Philly a 3-0 series lead. That's stung with your boy sitting a few rows back, but I digress. While Doc's a championship-winning head coach with the Boston Celtics, that was 15 years ago in a completely different NBA. Recently, Doc controversially moved Tyrese Maxey to the sixth man role, given the team's 27th in bench scoring. There were other reasons, but I think that was an incredibly questionable decision, as I'm going to get to. Weird part about moving Maxey to this spot is that he hasn't been given enough time to regain a flow after missing 18 straight games from November 18th to December 30th with a fractured bone in his foot. Definitely a concerning ongoing injury that Philly needs to be monitoring, by the way. Tyrese made his debut off the bench last night in LA. He scored the first 11 points of the fourth quarter for the Sixers, 13 in the frame, and he finished with 22 points off the pine. Maybe it'll work out, but I think an even weirder part about moving Tyrese to the bench is the fact that with Maxi in the starting five post-injury, Philly maintained the success they'd been having without him. Plus, Maxi was a big part of the Sixers' success last year. To be fair, they went 12-3 without Maxi, which included an eight-game winning streak, so I get why Doc wants to preserve that lineup, I guess, in a sense. This could help balance things out and give the Sixers the depth they've been looking for. My point is, in the game since Tyrese returned, the Sixers posted a very similar record compared to the games without him up until he was moved to the bench. Moving Tyrese to the pine couldn't have helped this team's chemistry, which leads us into the weirdest part about Maxi going to the bench. Tyrese willingly accepted this role, but there was confusion regarding how he accepted it, with Doc reportedly claiming that Maxi stepped up and offered to come off the bench in a text. When Maxi was asked about this, he said, quote, end quote, you've just got to be the bigger person. On a separate note, Joel Embiid does deserve the slightest bit of credit for the monster performances he's had this year, which has included two 50-point games and eight 40-point games. He's a player fans love to hate, but man's been a beast this year, and maybe a training camp with Harden is all the Embiid duo needed to get over the top. Problem is, Embiid falls down about 15 times every game and is one of the least reliably durable players in the association. You simply can't bet on this team staying healthy enough for when it matters most, in large part due to Joel's flopping. Thing is with the Embiid duo is that both James and Joel have been game planned for and shut down for the same reasons annually. Blitzing Harden in the pick and roll and doubling Joel in the post, combined with opposing coaches adjusting their approach on a game to game basis within the confines of a seven game series, has proved to be an impossible task for these two generational scores to surmount. Philly's usually able to advance past the first round, but they've failed to make it past round two in five straight years. Having said that, let's not forget about how many years it took teams like my Raps and the Bucks to break out and eventually win the title. Of course, for the Raps, it took trading Kawhi, and for the Bucks, it meant signing lockdown defender PJ Tucker. Maybe the Sixers signing the aging yet still steady defensive wing PJ Tucker, but more crucially, former Memphis Grizzly DeAnthony Melton are the moves that are going to take this Philly team over the top in 2023, but again, that's just my positive stance on things. The culture for this Sixer team doesn't seem to be headed in said positive direction, but you never know because over the last few months leading up to the bold decision to move Maxi to the bench, of course, 
Phillies displayed maybe the fewest weaknesses of any contender in terms of their consistency. Since November 12th, the Sixers have a 23-9 record, good enough for third best in the NBA, only behind Boston and Denver. They're also top seven in both offensive and defensive rating over that span. However, while they currently sit third in the Eastern Conference, the Sixers have the toughest schedule remaining of any team. Despite their recent success, in this community poll I just posted, 81% of people voted the Sixers can't win a championship. Why or why not can Philly win it all this year in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Today's commenter shout outs from my last vid and this one go to firstly Sam Scaluni who says J-Dub reminds me of a young OKC James Harden. The shot isn't as consistent but it'll get there by year three. And second shout out from my Curry video goes to Jaki who says, IMO, he's GOAT, basketball is a team sport, and no one, I repeat, no one has revolutionized the game as a team member more than him. All superstars have some gravity, but he stands out by the data-proven fact that he can manipulate the opponents with his gravity better than any other superstar. As a result, he makes his teammates better. Pause to read the rest of that answer. Peace.